Morgan Assist lets you add automated workflows to your calendar, be that Google Calendar, Outlook Calendar, or CalDAV, potentially in the future very similar to the Morgan Calendar app. But Morgan Assist lets you add travel time to events. So when you add a location, it adds an event before and after for the travel time automatically calculated. A buffer time event before or after a meeting. So if you invite someone to an event, it could add a buffer time before, so prep time, or after for review time. There is then calendar propagation, so you can propagate or add an event from one calendar to another, maybe home to work or personal to business. There is then automatic focus workflow, so it looks at flexible events and blocked events and moves the flexible event to a more appropriate time. Say, for example, you have an event that's booked inside of a time where you would be doing a flexible task. It would automatically move the flexible task somewhere else in the day so you can still go to that booked event or meeting that's been scheduled. Then the Slack Assistant workflow automatically detects when you have a description or an agenda inside of an event that you have an invitee to, maybe a meeting, and you can organize that event's agenda inside of Slack, responding back and forth, getting an AI generated description or agenda of what you want to talk about in the event, all being done inside of Slack and then updating your calendar event automatically. But on top of all of those core workflows, there are custom workflows. So you can add, take, divide, subtract elements of each of those workflows, maybe combine them together to customize the way you want your events and tasks, if you're using Morgan, to interact with one another using automations. And we're right at the start, so of course there's gonna be some teething issues, and I would imagine it will become easier to make custom workflows in the future, as more people build out their own workflows and potentially go into core workflows that you can just use plug and play sort of thing like the Obsidian Community plugins. And when you look at the pricing, it's not actually that bad when you compare it to some of the apps that do all of the things that Morgan Calendar Plus Morgan Assist do. So looking at Morgan Assist, I'm on the home page and this is going to give you some insights. You can see John is in my team and we've done a little bit of work, but not too much. And it gives you some insights into how well this has helped either myself or John organize our time and focus the work. You can see we've got the different workflows that we've got added inside. So this is personal workflows. This is the team workflow. So I can see the difference in the dashboard right here. And when I come down to personal preferences, I add my time zone and then I add my busy calendars. You can see I've added my Google Calendar account, the Danny Hatcher Google Calendar account. I just have the one and I've added, I turned on or added the busy calendars, which is my main events calendar. So that's my Google primary calendar. And then I have another calendar here as well, just to prove the concept that it works for as many as you want. I've just added one, but you can see I've got loads of other calendars. Then I've set up my working hours and my lunchtime and break. So Morgan Assist knows when I'm working, when I'm not. Uh, and you can see I start from nine till nine. And that's because I have blocks in the middle of the day because I don't work from nine till five like a normal person. Then going to the team preferences. There's another time zone option just in case your team is from a different time zone. Uh, and then preferred meeting times, which for me is just nine till six because we prefer to keep them during the day. And looking at the integrations tab very quickly, integration gallery shows you what you can integrate. At the moment, there's Google Calendar, Microsoft Outlook, and Slack. So you can see I've already connected Slack. And to my knowledge, there's going to be more than this in the future. So this is just where they're starting at. And Morgan already integrates with more apps. So I would imagine they will be next in the connected list. And if we go to connected integrations, you can see Google Slack, Todoist, Zoom, and Google Tasks are currently unavailable, but I have them connected inside of Morgan, so these, I assume, will be connected to Morgan Assist at some point in the future. Now to the fun part. These are the workflows that you can use to automate your calendar, whether that's Google, Outlook, or any other calendar, uh, and we've got the Focus Team workflow. Then there are the four personal workflows. So we've got calendar propagation, automated travel time, buffer time, and meeting assistant, and then we can write our own workflow. What's even more exciting is there's more to come. So you can see there's other planned workflows that will be default to Morgan Assist. And as people write their own workflow, we can see in the custom workflows, you can write your own. As they write their own, I would imagine they'll be added to this list too. Now, while I'm here, some of these workflows can only be added once. So you can see this focus workflow is a single instance, which is why there's a manage option rather than a create option, because I already have a focus workflow. The same for the travel time, the same for meeting assistant, buffer time, but calendar propagation is a multi-instance workflow. So you can have more than one of those workflows 
inside of your calendars. And when I go to the left side, you can see my workflows, and these are the workflows I currently have. Now I've turned them all off so I can go through them one by one, but I normally have them all active. Going over to Google Calendar very quickly, this is the calendar account that I use for my Morgan. So normally I'm looking at Morgan, so Alt C, I'm using Morgan here. I've turned them all off on that as well, so it doesn't matter if I go between the two. And you can see I've got this event, which is orange. That's inside of my primary events calendar. And I have this event in Morgan, it's a task, which is in my podcast calendar. And these are the two calendars we're going to look at for the moment. So to start with travel time, before I activate it, I'm going to go to the edit and edit workflow settings. So when you create a new automated travel time workflow, what you can do is change the name, just like any workflow. I'm going to leave it default. You select target calendars. You can select as many as you want. I'm just going to leave it with the events calendar for the moment. Add a location. Obviously, I'm going to blur this out for privacy reasons, but you add your location in for either work or home or wherever you want the travel time to be calculated from. Select either travel to the location only, so a one way or have it round trip. I have mine round trip. Select the travel mode. Now, most of the time I actually have public transportation on because the only time I add locations into my events is when they're further away, i.e. London, which means public transportation. So I want to know how long it's going to take by train or bus or something like that. However, if you drive or walk or cycle, you could use those options too. And if you do have public transportation on, maybe you want to add a buffer because it's delayed for whatever reason. So you can add some buffer time in there as well. I just leave it off. I'm going to save this. And now when I come to the travel time, all I want to do is activate it. This then gives me a run button so I can manually activate this workflow by pushing the run button. But at the moment, I don't actually have any events with a location in. So I'm going to drag an event down there. Pretend that I'm going to go to London, I'm going to add a location. Uh, let's just say I'm going to London, UK. It could be anywhere in London. Uh, and I'm going to save that. Now I've created an event that's got a London location on. And what Morgan Assist is going to do is look at Google Maps, calculate the travel time, and then add an event in before and afterwards. So you can see it's now added travel time before and travel time afterwards. And that's done automatically. So I didn't have to push the run button. I could have, but I didn't. It's automatically been created. Now, if I move this backwards in time, it's going to take a few seconds, but these travel time events will also move. You can see there's the one move. However, if I then delete this event, so say I'm not going to London anymore, it will then automatically delete the created events from the Morgan Assist workflow. The next workflow we're going to look at is buffer time because it's very similar to travel time. If we go to the edit options, edit workflow settings, you can see I can change the workflow name. I still want to add a target calendar. And this is going to be the calendar that the event, the buffer time event is going to be put in. So this time I'm actually going to go to the podcast. You can select more than one, but I'm just going to go for the podcast calendar this time. When do you want the buffer time? Let's say before, it could be after. So I'm going to say before. And this then gives you a bit of flexibility. So if the meeting is shorter than 30 minutes, you can add a time in 5, 10 or 15. If it's longer than 30 minutes, you can add a different time slot, 5, 10, all the way up to 30 minutes. So let's leave this to 20 minutes. Let's put that on five, save. I'm now going to activate the buffer time workflow. I'm not going to push run because it's not going to do anything. If I come to Thursday and add an event, let's make sure it's in the correct calendar. So let's put it into the podcast calendar. So it's the yellow podcast calendar. I'm going to add a test event and for it to be a meeting, obviously I need a person in there. So I'm going to add Jonathan Stewart because he is my podcast co-host and I'm going to save that. John, apologies for the event, but uh, we've tested this before, so I'm sure you'll know what's going on. And you can see it's already added in the buffer time for that event. But what I want to do is also add a smaller one. So let's make this from 3 till 3.15. Call it short event. Add John. Make sure it's in the podcast calendar. And then save. And invite all guests. And if I click into this buffer event time, you can see it's from 11.10 to 11.30. So it's a 20 minute block. And going back to the buffer time, going into the edit, edit settings, you can see that's the 20 minute block because it's a long meeting and the short meeting should have created a five minute block. You can see it's created a five minute block. If I click in there, can it let me? Yeah, there we go. Five minute block. Uh, and it's actually there twice because I have John's calendar in here. So it's showing John's calendar and my podcast calendar. And just like travel time, if I click and delete the event, uh, yeah, let's just send it so John knows I've deleted it. 
and then in here we can also delete that too it will then automatically there you go there's one buffer time gone automatically delete the buffer time in there which makes it really simple to update moving down to calendar propagation what this is doing is letting you propagate or add a an event from one calendar to another so we have the same workflow name settings and here we can see source and destination the source calendar is the podcast calendar so if i add an event in the podcast calendar it will propagate the event to my events calendar so a new orange event will be added if i make a new yellow event so i'm going to save that and then i'm going to turn calendar propagation on so looking inside the calendar i have this yellow event here and you can see it's now created or propagated another event in my events calendar and it says busy via morgan because obviously we've got the event inside the podcast calendar and then it's created it in the events calendar but that's not all because if we go back to edit this workflow and scroll down we have this option down here which says only propagate events marked as busy so it can be specific to only busy events and you can see this little nerd mode button here. If you push that and you love code and getting uh, all jiggy with it, <laughs> uh, you can see you can add, customize, and do whatever you want with the calendar propagation workflow, very similar to the custom workflows. But I don't speak developer, so I'm going to hide that and leave it alone. Now for this next one, I actually had to make a Slack server because I don't use Slack, I use Discord, but it works really well, and I'm hoping for a Discord integration at some time in the future. Morgan, hopefully if you're listening. But... If we scroll down, you can see there's the workflow name. We can select a target calendar. So I've just got my events calendar in there. And then we get three different options, a super short, a medium or detailed description. And the description is the agenda for the event. And when we scroll up to the explanation, this one's a little different because Slack will tell you if there was an agenda added to the event description. And if there wasn't, it's going to talk to you about it and then actually approve the agenda directly on Slack. So I'm going to keep this super short. The Slack integration is already activated. I'm going to save it. We have the Slack agenda meeting running, so it's active. I'm going to set up another meeting with John because uh, John doesn't mind being spammed with event invites. And you can see down in the description, I'm leaving this deliberately empty. Obviously, ideally, you wouldn't. I'm going to save it. And I don't know whether you heard that, but I got a Slack notification. So if I go to Slack, you can see the Morgan app. Uh, I've tested this a few times, as you can see. Morgan app has told me, hey, in the Slack test event, that's the event we've just created, there isn't an agenda. So if I now come in and say reply in thread, it says that there isn't an agenda. So you can reply to this message with a brief description of a meeting and it will come back with an agenda for you. So I'm going to say this is about telling John about the Morgan Assist Slack integration. I'm going to send that message inside of Slack. The Slack Morgan app will then reply and give me an agenda. So it says introduction and welcome, overview of the Morgan Asset Slack integration, demonstration of key features and benefits, Q&A session, next steps and action items. <laughs> Very nice. If I click on see more, it then goes more. Obviously, if I wanted a medium or longer description, then it will give me more. Uh, and then I get three options. I can type yes, and it will update the event, write your agenda, or no answer. Now, I'm just going to go yes, because I'm lazy, so I can reply yes, enter, and that's all done inside of Slack. And you can see Morgan Assist has now updated my event. So when I go back to my Slack test event inside of Google Calendar or inside of Morgan or whatever calendar service you're using, if I click in, you can see inside of the description of the event is added in that overview. I don't know about you, but I think that's pretty cool. And a reminder, this is a default workflow that Morgan have made. In the future, we can make custom workflows which could replicate parts of these, all of these, add, take, divide, do whatever you want to all of these workflows. So maybe you want to add something to the Slack agenda workflow and make it a little bit more custom to you. But before we go into the custom workflows, let's go over the flexible team focus workflow first. So when we look at the flexible time event, you can see this is team focused. And if we go to the edit and edit workflow settings, what this does is it looks for any event with hashtag flex in the title or inside of the description of the event. It then runs daily at 6 p.m. and optimizes the current and following work week. So the current day, i.e. today, and the next day won't be rescheduled because Morgan Assist will assume that you've organized that. And it will update with respect to the invitees, personal and team settings. So Morgan recently released the Morgan team support. 
So looking at my Morgan very quickly, you can see we've got my team members down here, editor and podcast, co-host, and then I have the button to workflows on the side. And so if I add any invitees, so any of my team members to the meeting or to the event, then their personal and team settings will also be taken into account. The other settings is just the name and then whether it wants to consider all non-repeating events as flexible. I'm gonna leave this blank for the moment, so push save. And going to my Google Calendar, obviously today is a Saturday, so it's a weekday anyway. This is also a weekday, even though in my Morgan settings, it is set for a work week. I'm just gonna leave this off because most people won't be working on Saturdays and Sundays. So I'm gonna move forwards a couple of days uh, and you can see I've added in a meeting. This is in my events calendar, so it's a busy calendar. And then I have a flexible event and this has got hashtag flex inside of the title. This is in Google Calendar still and at six o'clock today what it will do is it will run the workflow. So let's manually run the workflow. It was successful. Now when I go back to Google Calendar you can see it's now moved that flex event to a more appropriate time. My workday starts at nine so it started the event at nine. Some things to note, if you have an all day event, at the moment there's a slight issue where Morgan Flex is like, hey, you've got an event all day, uh, you can't do this any other time, so I'm just gonna leave it where it is. And from my personal experience, there's been some quirks where Morgan Assist decides to dump the event, but there's the same for most auto scheduling tools, whether that's Motion or Reclaim, they tend to dump events or tasks in places that you're like, that doesn't really make much sense, but maybe that's a teething issue. Now moving into the really fun part and very technical part is the custom workflows. Now I'm actually adding requests into Morgan. You can see inside the Morgan Discord server, inside of the workflow section, I'm adding in custom workflow requests and you could do the same if you want to request something. Maybe someone's going to make it for you or maybe it's something the team could look at. This is what I'm personally doing, so I would suggest you have a go because when I look into this, so I'm going to turn this on, I'm going to go to edit, edit workflow settings. I, as I mentioned earlier, I'm not a programmer. I don't develop Cody stuff. So when I scroll down here and I see this, I'm like, that's a foreign language. <laughs> I understand some of it, so I'm going to go through roughly what it's doing, but I see custom workflows very similar to the Obsidian community plugins that we have in Obsidian. So you've got Obsidian core plugins, which are the workflows we've gone through already, and then the Obsidian community plugins, which is like this custom workflow thing. So you can see we can connect integrations, use different triggers, and then use API tokens. Yes, you can name the workflow, but when we look at the triggers, this one is automatic on calendar change, but it could be automatic via timed or an HTTP trigger. And this is exciting because potentially you could use something like or Notion or Obsidian or anything really to trigger this event. And in future, I would imagine this is where a lot of the integrations and a lot of the other custom workflows will come in, but we'll have to see how that develops over time. I'm using the automatic calendar change, so I need to tell it what calendar should trigger this. And for me, I'm using my flexible tasks calendar. It's a calendar specific for flexible tasks. And then I need to select the calendars you want to control with the script. So if I want to say anything inside of this script, hey, do something to this calendar or change something in that calendar or look for something in this calendar, I need to select it in the settings so the script knows what it's looking for. In this case, just the flexible task calendar. Having Slack in here will be very nice. I would imagine it's coming soon because obviously we've already got the Slack default workflow. And coming down into the script, you can see the Morgan API docs link, which if, if you want to have a look through the docs, feel free. Uh, join the Discord and ask people that know what they're talking about. That's personally what I do. Uh, and then you can click here to see some examples of orig original things which is inside of the docs. But for right now, what this script is doing, this script, to my understanding, is a helper function that basically says, look at the calendars. And this is saying run the trigger function, which is this bit in the settings. This says if there was no trigger, then no event updates are needed. However, if there was events updated or added or modified, then I want you to do something. And only if it is not an event, so if it is a Morgan task, so this is a Morgan specific script, then it's going to look to see if there is no event description or if the event description doesn't include hashtag flex. And if either of those things are true, then make sure you add a hashtag flex to the description of the event Morgan task. So I'm going to push save. And for this one, I'm going to have to use Morgan. So you can see this is green and that is my flexible task calendar. If I double click, the hashtag flex has already been added because obviously the workflow is constantly running. So if I click in this space, type task space, it's now created. You can see it's now a task. I'm going to call it test task. I'm going to change it from the events calendar to the flexible task calendar. So that's the green calendar. And I'm going to leave the notes, so the description, 
empty and I'm going to save it. Now when I come down to the task and I double click, you can see at the moment it's empty. And now after a bit of time, if I double click, yeah, there we go. You've got the hashtag flex in there. Now, from my experience, this can take quite a while sometimes at the moment. So obviously because it's right at the beginning, maybe it's the script wasn't great. I didn't write it. Um, or maybe it's just taking time in the background to check for the events. But this is certainly something that's going to be interesting when it comes to custom workflows because anyone can make it. Uh, the speed of it is certainly going to be a question, but I'm intrigued to see what happens in the future.